Okay, we are going to see if this series converges or not. We have the series as n goes from 1 to infinity, and then here we have n factorial, and then we square that, and then 2n inside, and then we factorial that. And if you want to try the limit test, right, if you take the limit of this as n goes to infinity, I will tell you that will equal to 0. So test for divergence doesn't work. But you don't need to worry too much though. For this one here, I think there's a very clear indication that we should use the ratio test because of the factorial. So here we go. Let's just, just go ahead by using the ratio test. And for the ratio test, we are going to first check the limit as n goes to infinity, and then we put down the absolute value. This part right here is our a n. And then we will just have to do a n plus 1 over a n. But I'd like to write this as a n plus 1 times the reciprocal of a n. Yeah? This will remind you to do the reciprocal. It's easier to set up this way. And after we compute this limit, if we get a limit that's less than 1, that means we can say this series converges. If this limit is greater than 1, then we can say that series diverges. If this right here is equal to 1, then we have to try something else because the ratio test is inconclusive. But anyway, let's go ahead and just work this out. So here we have the limit as n goes to infinity. We really don't need the absolute for you in this case because everything is positive. Here, a n plus 1, we just put n plus 1 into this n and that n. So on the top, we have n plus 1, and then we factorial that, and then after that, we square that over. The bottom is 2n, but the n is going to be n plus 1. So 2 times n plus 1, and then after this, we factorial this. That is a n plus 1. Now, multiply by the reciprocal of a n, so just flip that, so 2n factorial on the top over n factorial and then square that. And one of the things that people like to do the ratio test is because of the cancellations. It's very satisfying. But we have to do it carefully though. We are going to break this apart carefully. So let me write this down again. We are looking at the limit. n goes to infinity. Here, n plus 1 factorial means we start with n plus 1 and then times the next number, which is n, and then times the next one, which is n minus 1, and so on, so on, so on. In another word, we can just put this as n plus 1 times n factorial. So once again, n plus 1 factorial equals n plus 1 times n factorial. And then we will have to square this, and this is a multiplication, so I just have to square this and square that. Now for the bottom, this is really just 2n plus 2, and then we will have to factorial that. So we start with the first term, which is 2n plus 2. And then the next is you just subtract 1, so 2n plus 1. And then you do it again, 2n. And then you do it again, and you do it again. But that is just going to give us 2n and then factorial. Now, this and that just keep it to an factorial over n factorial and then squared and now here is the best part n factorial square cancels out with n factorial square moreover 2n factorial cancels out with 2n factorial huh, so nice is there anything else yes 2n plus 2 we can first factor out a 2 and notice n plus 1 can cancel with 1 of the n plus 1, so we have just 1 here. Now, we are looking at the limit as n goes to infinity. For the top, we just have n plus 1. And for the bottom, we have the 2, and then 2n plus 1 from here. As n goes to infinity, we just care about the dominating part on the top, which is n. On the bottom, we care about 2n, but don't forget to multiply by this too. So that's 4n. n over 4n 
we can say that's just equal to 1 over 4. Thankfully, we do have a limit, and this limit is less than 1. Therefore, we can come here and say this series converges, and that's quoted by the ratio test. And that will do it.